guys it's Anna today I'm gonna show you how to make these really pretty crochet striped little kind of lounge shorts I saw some similar shorts from a brand called peachy den and um, they're so cute I love them and they're knit and I was like I wonder if we can do something crocheted similar to that so obviously that's what this is as you can probably guess so I loved those and I wanted to do something that was like a similar sort of color palette so I did one that was close to their like green black cream colored one and that's what I'm showing in this tutorial but you could definitely also do just like a solid color pair of shorts it won't be any different than what I'm showing in the video and I also like mention it in the video what you'll do differently but really all you're doing is you're just not changing colors you're just carrying on with the same color yarn but these shorts are super customizable you can make them as long as you want as high of a rise as you want like the waistband can be super thick or super thin it's totally up to you which i love because you can make it like perfect for your body exactly what you want and it's pretty simple too and i did this all in one day so it's really not too difficult i think a beginner should definitely be able to do this pretty quickly it's just half double crochet single crochet and like slip stitching um so it's pretty basic and beginner friendly but they're super cute and comfy and cute and comfy and i don't know what else to call them but they're cute and comfy and i like them so yeah let's start the video okay all right the first thing you're gonna need is some dk weight yarn this is all from hobie it's recycled cotton um, and I'll have this specific one linked in the description, but last time I checked they were kind of low on stock for certain colors So I'll also put some other alternatives that would work well for these shorts for this video I'm gonna use three different colors because I want like that striped look But you're more than welcome to just do like one solid color or you could do two or more than three whatever But yeah, I'm just gonna do Three different ones if you do decide you just want to use one color then everything's going to be the exact same you just won't change color when i change color you'll just stay with the same yarn you'll also need some scissors a measuring tape a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook which matches my nails kind of some stitch markers i'm just using safety pins you can use like actual like crochet slash knit stitch markers or you could just use like a bobby pin and that's totally fine and lastly you'll need a darning needle to weave in our ends once we're done the first thing we're gonna do is make our waistband so grab your yarn that you want to be used for your waistband, which I'm gonna do white, and make a slip knot. So just wrap the yarn around your finger, and then go through the loop and pull your yarn through to make a little slip knot, and then insert your hook and tighten that down. And now chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten and that includes our turning chain and this length minus that last chain we did is going to be the height of the waistband so if you want yours to be a little bit taller then you can do more chains or if you want it shorter then just do fewer but just skip that first chain there and go into this second v here and just pick up that one loop there and then make a single crochet so pull up a loop and then yarn over pull through two and then go into the next V so this one right there with that one loop pull up a loop and then pull through two same in the next one and you're just making a single crochet into each of the remaining chains so we should have nine total single crochets then go into the next one and then the last one is right there so that is my ninth single crochet. Now chain one and then turn. And now we are gonna be making back loop only single crochets all the way down. So starting with this first single crochet right there that I'm pointing to, you're gonna go just into the back loop only. So go from the top right into there and pick up that back loop, pull up a loop and then pull through two to make a back loop only single crochet. That's our first one and we're going for nine. And then go into the second one, pick up just the back loop. It's our second single crochet. Then the next one, back loop only. And then just do this all the way down. 
So I just did my eighth, so there's one more, and it's just gonna be that one right there at the end. So just insert your hook, pick up that back loop only, and then make our final single crochet and then chain one and turn again. Now we're gonna do exactly what we just did. So in that very first single crochet there, make a back loop only single crochet. And then in the next one, do the same thing, same thing in the next one, and just all the way down, just back loop only going into the back loop only there. And then this final one is a little bit harder to get to because it's on the very end, but you just insert your hook through the top there and only pick up that one back loop like that. And there we go. Our final back loop only single crochet, chain one and turn and then just do it all over again. So in that very first single crochet, once again, just do a back loop only single crochet and then we're just gonna do this all the way down. And then that last one, just that back loop. There you go, and then chain one and turn. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we have a length of this that can go around our waist, but it also needs to be able to fit over your butt. Like you need to be able to pull it up from the bottom. I'll show you what I'm talking about and how many rows that ends up being. So if you really look at it, like the first row is gonna be right there. That's the row that we did into the chain. And the second one is this kind of pronounced like up one right there. And then the third is gonna be that divot there. And the fourth is that raised one again there. Okay, I have a pretty decent length here. So this is kind of what it's looking like. That's about where I want it to rest on my waist, like that's like the height that I want it to be at. Um, and as you can see, I do have some room a little bit because you do want it to be able to sh like fit over your hips. Like it has to fit over your hips or else you aren't gonna be able to get them on. So for most people, it's probably gonna be a little bit loose in the waist, um, but that's just kind of how it is with crochet. Like. It's not going to be super stretchy. And for me, this was 96 rows total of the single crochet back loop only rows. But I do want to mention that you really, really, really have to try this on multiple times and make sure that you get a row length that is good for your body and don't just like go off of the row number that I'm giving you because I have made these shorts before and I used a different yarn. It's the same weight of yarn and stuff but it was a different yarn, a different like makeup. It was acrylic and cotton. And um, I had a totally different row number. I had 108 rows to get basically the same width and it was a lot stretchier to get on. So it's just different, different yarns will give you different results. So you really have to try this on and get the right number for both your body and the specific yarn that you're using. But yeah, like I said, you have to be able to fit it over your hips and butt. It doesn't have to be comfortable at all, but you have to be able to like get it on like that, you see? And so, yeah, you might have to sacrifice a little bit of tightness in the waist to be able to accommodate for your hips and your butt, but that's just kind of what you have to do. So again, this was 96 rows for me. Like I said, I did 96 total rows of the single crochet back loop only. So I just finished my 96th and chain one, but obviously do whatever number you need. And you're gonna fold over the ribbing so that you're working from right to left now. And now we're just gonna slip stitch this row to the beginning row that we made. So just make sure there's no twists or anything and that this is like nice and flat. And you're gonna insert your hook after making that chain one and go into that very first single crochet, both loops like that. And now pick up the back piece that we're also connecting to and you'll go into that very first chain which it might be kind of difficult for you to tell so if it makes it easier you can just count like the chains from the left so this is the beginning so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine and I know I'm going into the ninth because that's how many single crochets I was making for all of my rows if that makes sense and you're gonna just insert into that loop and just get 
that one little loop on your hook like that. And now yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook to make a slip stitch. Then go into the next stitch, both loops on your hook, and then the next little loop right there. And then pull through all of the loops and then go into this next stitch in the front and then this next loop in the back. And we're just going to slip stitch all the way down. So just go through that stitch and then the top loop on the back row. And just, I'm gonna do this all the way and you should like line up, everything should line up and your last stitch over here should line up with the last loop over here. And so I'm just gonna do this all the way down. I have one more left, so I'm gonna go into that final stitch there and then the final loop, which is kind of hard to see, but it's gonna be right there. There we go. And then yarn over and then pull through all of the loops on the hook. So then I'm gonna chain one and now that it's like fully connected there, you're gonna try this on again. And again, make sure this can get all the way from like your feet up to your waist and that um, it's not gonna get like stuck anywhere and that it can stretch over your butt and still like kind of fits in your waist-ish. If you do need to make this like substantially bigger to get over your waist or to get over your hips, um, and it's just like way too big on your waist, then at the end you can weave in like a drawstring if you want. Um, you just make like a long chain and then like weave it in and out through each row and then you can just tie it in the front so it kind of cinches in. But um, I found that like for my proportions, it is okay without a drawstring, but um, obviously everybody's gonna be different. So we've made our chain one at the end of slip stitching these rows together and now we're gonna chain another one for a chain two. And now we're gonna work one half double crochet into each row. So I'm gonna start with this row right here. And so to make a half double crochet, you wrap the yarn around the hook once and then go into the stitch and pull up a loop. So you have three loops on the hook and then yarn over and pull through all three. And so that's gonna be the first half double crochet. And then in the next one, which the next row is this, I'm just gonna go into that little gap there and make another half double crochet. And we're just gonna do this for every row. So the next one is this row right here. And these are not like actual stitches that we're going in. So there's no one correct place that you have to go into. But I just kind of go like, I'm gonna go right into that hole there. And then for the next row, go like there. So again, it doesn't matter like specifically what hole you go into to make the half double crochet. It's just important that you get one half double crochet per row. So like you'll do one in the divot there and then one in the high point, divot, high point. That's kind of like how you can tell when there's a new row. So the next one is gonna be in this raised rib right there. Next one's gonna be in this divot, then in the raised part, and then the divot. And I'm just gonna do half double crochets all the way around. So I've just made it all the way around the waistband with my half double crochets. And I ended up with one extra than my row number, so my row number was 92, and I made 93 half double crochets total, counting this first half double crochet we made as the first one, not that turning chain. Um, so yeah, it's okay if you have one extra, it's okay if it's the same, you just want it to be about the same number as um, the number of rows. And so I just made my last one and I'm going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet we made. So I'm just gonna go into the top of that stitch like that, grab my yarn and then pull it through both loops. And now we are gonna change colors if that's something that you're doing. If you're just using one color, then just disregard the step and carry on with your same yarn. So to change colors, you're just gonna chain one 
and then cut your yarn. I thought I was recording just now, but I was not. So um, all I did was just cut my yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail so that we can weave that in later. And then I just like pulled the yarn through and tightened it down. So it made that little knot there. And then now to change our colors, you're gonna insert your hook into the top of that half double crochet, that first one, the one that we just slip stitched into and just insert your hook there and then take your new color that you want to change to. For me, I'm gonna do my green next and then just make a slip knot and then put the slip knot on your hook and then tighten it down a little bit. And then pull that through that stitch right there and then chain two. And now we're gonna turn our work. So now we're gonna go that way around and that's gonna happen every row by the way. Um, because if you go like just in one continuous spiral without like going that way and then turning and going the other way, then your seam won't be straight and we want a straight seam. And I'm just moving these ends kind of out of the way. Um, if you want, you can work over them, crochet over them so you don't have to weave them in later, but um, just be mindful of like which side you want to be your good side because we are gonna be like flipping it inside out every time we turn, if that makes sense. So you don't want like to do it every single time. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, I'm just not gonna be working over them because I don't want to see it through on the other side. So our first half double crochet is gonna be into that half double crochet right there, right next to the chain. So just wrap your yarn around the hook, go into that first stitch opening and make a half double crochet. And then in the next one, make another. And then we're just gonna do this all the way around, just one half double crochet into each half double crochet from the previous row. All the way around, super simple. I made it back around to the beginning and the number of half double crochets you do now should be um, the same as what we just did. So for me, mine was 93 and I just made 93 of the half double crochets in this green color. And then to end off this row, you're gonna go into the top of this half double crochet right there. So just insert right there in the top, get those two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through both loops to make a slip stitch. And then we are gonna chain one and cut our yarn because we're changing colors again. So just cut it and then pull through like that and then tighten it down. My next color is gonna be black. So just make a slip knot with your next color. We're gonna go into where we just made that slip stitch so right there in the top of that first half double crochet and then put it on your hook and just pull it through and then chain two and turn. So now we're working this direction and this is that first half double crochet right there. So we're gonna work directly into that stitch. So just insert there and then make our first half double crochet and then we're doing now exactly what we just did. So just one half double crochet into every stitch. Just all the way until we get back to the beginning. There's no increases or anything yet. We're just doing all, just one half double crochet in each stitch all the way. So I'll just come back to you once I get to the end. I'm at the end and I just did, again, 93 stitches total. So the stitch count should not change here. And then I will do what we did earlier when changing colors, go into the top of this first half double crochet and make a slip stitch and then chain one and then we'll cut our yarn. But before you do that, you should try this on and make sure that you can still get this over your hips because these half double crochet stitches are less stretchy than the waistband. So it's gonna be a little bit tighter 
Um, so you still need to make sure that everything's good, that you can still get it over your hips. But once you're good with that, just cut your yarn and then pull through just like we've done previously. And if that's all good, then we can go ahead and start on the next row, which is gonna be when we start doing our increases. So you're gonna want to put this stitch that we just made with this tail in the dead center of the shorts or the waistband, whatever. And you can tell if it's in the middle, if you like fold it this way um, and just make sure that that tail is in fact in the center and then just unfold it so it's in the center there. And you're gonna need two stitch markers. I'm just using safety pins again. So what you're gonna do is in each side, in like the middle stitch of each side, you're just gonna place a stitch marker. So I'm gonna do this one about there. As you can see, it's like right there on the side. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then just place the stitch marker right there. So now we have two stitch markers on either side. And basically how this is gonna work is like, it's gonna be facing this way to us when the shorts are done. This is the waistband. Um, and this seam is gonna be like right in the back of the shorts, the middle of the back of the shorts. And then we're gonna increase here to make like the hips wider. So to start the next row, we're doing exactly what we've done to change colors, go into this last or this first half double crochet that we just made that slip stitch into, make a slip knot with your new color, which for me, I'm back to the white. So make the slip knot, put it on the hook and tighten it down. Then just pull that through and chain two like normal and now turn. And our first stitch is gonna be right there in that first half double crochet. So just make that. There we go. And then, and then the next one is in the next one, just like we've done for the past two rows, just a half double crochet in every stitch, but we're gonna make an increase once we get to this stitch marker. So I've made it to this stitch marker and I'll take the stitch marker out. And in this next stitch, I'm gonna place two half double crochets like that. And then just continue working. And I'm gonna place my stitch marker into one of those two half double crochets that we just put into that one stitch, just so I can mark like where it is on the shorts. And then I'm just gonna keep just doing one half double crochet per stitch until I make it all the way around to the other stitch marker and then we'll make another increase there. I made it to the next stitch marker, so I'll just take that out and then in this next stitch, I'll make two half double crochets to make an increase. And then I'll put a stitch marker into one of those two stitches. And then just keep on going. I made it back to the beginning, just doing one half double crochet into all of the remaining stitches. And then we're just doing exactly what we just did. So go in that first half double crochet and make a slip stitch and chain one and then cut the yarn and pull through. Now grab the next color, which is green for me, and then make a slip knot. And insert your hook into the top of that stitch we just made a slip knot in, slip stitch in, and then put the slip knot on your hook and tighten it down through and chain two and now turn so now just like normal we are gonna work a half double crochet into that very first stitch right there like that and then just one in every stitch until we get to this stitch marker so before we go any further with the increases, you might have to make some adjustments based on your measurements versus mine. So take your tape measure and measure your waist measurement and then also measure your like hips slash butt measurements. So like the smallest part of your waist and the widest part of your hips. 
and then find the difference in the two. So for me, my hips measurement was 38 inches around and then my waist measurement was 26. So my difference between those two is gonna be 12 inches. So if your difference is pretty close to mine, then that should work. But if your difference is a lot bigger, then you might have to do more increases. And if it's smaller, then you might wanna do less increases. Um, unless you want it to be a little bit more oversized, but yeah, if you want it to fit the same as mine Then you might have to do more or fewer Increases per row. So let's say that your difference is smaller than mine Like maybe like nine inches or something then what you could do is instead of doing an increase or two increases Every single row you could do two increases every other row or two Out of three rows you increase instead of all rows you increase if that makes sense but you do wanna make sure that you're doing two increases per row, meaning like one in each side because you don't want it to be like off. You want them to be symmetrical. So hopefully that makes sense. It is gonna be a little bit of trial and error if you don't have similar proportions because you might need to do more or less. But let's say you had a larger difference than me, then you might need to do more increases. So for that, you could do four increases per row. Um, and just see how that is doing for your body. So maybe like do like one increase over here, one increase over here, and then do the same on the other side so it can increase a little bit more quickly. But yeah, you are gonna have to kind of play around with that, but I wanted to give my measurements just to kind of give you an idea of what my like proportions are and if that's gonna work for you. But for me, I'm just gonna be doing two increases, one on each side per row. So right now I'm just gonna keep making half double crochets until I reach that stitch marker and then I'm gonna make an increase. So I'm at the stitch marker and I'm gonna make another increase. And for the future rows, you don't wanna make the increase in the exact same stitch every single time because you'll be able to see it. So from now on, I'm just gonna kinda stagger it around the previous rows increase so for the next row i might do like over here next one i'll do over here like i'll just kind of get it in this general area um just so it's not like one line of increases so i'm going to put my stitch marker back in but i'm not going to put it in this stitch i'm just going to put it in like this general area if that makes sense just so i can see it for future rows that I do um, just to like remind me that I need to do an increase but I don't have to do it in a specific stitch every time in fact you don't want to do it in a specific stitch every time you just kind of want it in this general hip area I made it to the other stitch marker and I'm just going to show you like what I was talking about about staggering your increases so I'm going to make an increase into this next stitch which as you can see is a little off of the previous increase and then for the next row maybe I'll do like over here right after and then next one I might do right in the middle you just kind of want it to be like in this general area but not necessarily in the same exact stitch each time I just made my last stitch right there and then I'm gonna go into that first half double crochet with a slip stitch chain one cut my yarn and then attach my new color, which is gonna be black. Put the slip knot on the hook, tighten it down, pull it through, and then chain two, then turn. So now, just going to that first stitch, I'm just gonna keep doing the same pattern for the next few rows, just doing two increases per row or whatever you've found that you need to do. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do once we get a little bit further down, we're gonna do a few more rows of just these two increases, one in each hip. And then a little bit later on, we're gonna start adding increases here in like the butt. But right now, just keep doing this pattern for the next few rows. And then I will tell you when to start making these increases. And I'll show you how to do all that and stuff. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep going and then I'll catch back up to you when it's time to make these increases. I just finished my eighth row, counting this first row that we did directly into the ribbing 
where I did it like the same color as the ribbing. That's our first one. So I just did my eighth and started my ninth. And now we are gonna be doing, in addition to the increases we were already doing on the hips, we're gonna do increases, um, one on each side of the back. So just lay it flat with this seam, once again, in the very center. And then just mark like the center stitch-ish on each side. So like I'm doing that one and I'm doing a row down so it doesn't get in the way. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. Just find like the center. I'm gonna go with this one. Doesn't have to be perfect, but there's that. And then now, instead of just decreasing on each hip, we're also gonna be decreasing in these places too, in the back. So I'm just gonna do one half double crochet in every stitch, just like normal, until I get to this stitch marker. And then I'm gonna be doing an increase in this one and in this one, and then also in the hips. So I'm gonna be doing a total of four increases per row. So I'm about at that stitch marker there, so I'm just gonna put two double or half double crochets into one stitch rather than one, and then just carry on until I get over here to this hip, and then I'll also make another increase, and then work just one half double crochet all the way over here, and then work two when I get to this hip, and then work two into this butt increase. Now I'm in the area for this hip increase. So as you can see, like it went, that was my increase on this row, then I went there, then there, then there. So now I'm just gonna do like this next one, just to kind of spread it out a little bit so it's not always in the same line. And then I'm just gonna work all the way around until I get to over here. I made it to this other hip and I'm gonna make another increase. So there's that one and then I'll work over to this other stitch marker there and then make another increase. So here I am, I'm gonna make that increase and then just finish up this row. So basically from now on, I'm just gonna keep continuing that same row that we just did over and over, changing colors obviously, um, until I have like a width that is the widest part of my butt slash hips, if that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean and how many rows that is, but basically like you want it to increase to the widest part and you want it to sit there at that widest part of your body. So I'll just continue doing this and then show you what it's looking like once I get some more rows done of doing this four increase row. All right, I just finished my 19th row total and this is how it's looking. So I'm pretty good with the um, increases at this point. Like I don't need to keep making it bigger. It's like big enough there and it's sitting right there at the largest part of my butt, basically. At this point, we are not gonna be making any more increases. I'm just gonna keep working in the round, just like we've been doing, but I'm not gonna be doing the increases. So just one half double crochet per stitch. And then um, I'm just gonna do that until I get to like here, so we can make like the leg holes. So yeah, I'm going to now just work one half double crochet into each stitch, exactly what we've been doing, but not doing the increases anymore. So it'll be super simple. I'm just gonna keep doing this and then I will come back to you once I get to like crotch level, basically. This is what the shorts look like for me after doing some more rows of just plain half double crochets all the way around, no increases. This is 27 rows total, including that very first one of the white color that I did. But basically just like hold the shorts up like at the waistband to where you want them to sit height wise, and then just work down until it goes down to like where your legs start basically, like where the seam would be of 
shorts, if that makes sense. And for reference, I measured from like right under this waistband, so like the very first row that I did to the bottom, and that's about nine and a half inches. This is kind of what it's looking like if I hold it up to me. Um, so yeah, that's how far I went. And now we're actually pretty close. We just need to like connect the front and the back to make that seam and then we'll work in spirals for each leg. Like I said, I just did my 27th row and then I cut my yarn just like normal. And now what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna make the leg holes. So to do that, we're gonna make like a bridge from the very back to the very front middle. So to find the middle, um, if you wanted to, then you can count every single stitch and divide it by two and then go to that middle stitch like that. Um, but if you're lazy and you don't wanna do that, then we'll just do like our easy way. So what I'm gonna do is just like fold the skirt so that this seam that's in the very back of the skirt is on the very side. So you wanna fold it on that seam. So get the fold as close to that seam as possible and just get it nice and flat. And then on this opposite side, which this is gonna be the middle of the front of the shorts, take a stitch marker and then just put the stitch marker into that very middle stitch that's like along this fold. So I'm gonna do this one right there. Just put my stitch marker in there and then if we fold it back to where this is in the middle, then now we have this stitch, which is the middle stitch of the front. So we can use that to kind of line up what the middle is. So if I go back to the back, I'm gonna attach my yarn with a new color. Next one's gonna be white. So just do what we've been doing. Make a slip knot and then insert your hook. Put the slip knot on the hook, pull it up, and then this time, so I'll just chain one just to secure it in there. But this time we are gonna be chaining a little bridge there. This number is gonna be a little different depending on your size. So I will put on the screen what number to do depending on your size. But basically it's just, if you're an extra small or a small, do eight. So we just did one, so I would do seven more. And if you're a medium or large, you would do 10. If you're an extra large, extra, extra large, you do 12 and then for every other like all of the other sizes, you just follow that same pattern of adding two, if that makes sense. I just did one, and so I'm, I'm gonna do eight for like an extra small, small. So I'm gonna do seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total, including that first one. Go to this other side where we put the stitch marker and go into that stitch with the stitch marker. I'm just gonna do it with the stitch marker already in there, but if it's easier, you can take it out. Just like obviously make sure you know which stitch you're going into. And we're just gonna make a slip stitch to connect like that. And then chain two. And now we are gonna work this way, going across the bridge like that. So first thing we'll do is go into that very next chain, which is a little bit difficult to see, but it's gonna be right there with a half double crochet. So that very next chain. Make sure you get both loops of the chain on your hook. Pull up a loop, make a half double crochet, and then do the same thing in the next chain, which is right there. There we go. Half double crochet, same thing in this next one. And then the next one. And then I have one more and your total number of half double crochets should be equal to the number of chains that we made. So I just made eight total. And my next one is gonna be into that stitch right there that I'm pointing to. Hopefully you can see that. I know the yarn's kind of dark, but it's gonna be that one. 
right there, which is right to the left of where we attached our yarn, just like we would normally do when starting a new row. So I'm gonna go right into that stitch and make a half double crochet. And then the next one is right there. And we're just gonna go all the way around this leg hole with half double crochets until we get back to this bridge where we started right here. So just gonna do half double crochets, one in each stitch. We're not doing any increases or anything, just regular half double crochets all the way around. And I will just come back to you once I've made it back around. So I made it back around to this stitch marked stitch right before the bridge. And I'm just gonna work my last half double crochet into that stitch marked stitch. And then we are gonna slip stitch into that first half double crochet, just the exact same way that we've connected the end of rows for the rest of the shorts. So just go into the top of that half double crochet like that and then make a slip stitch. And now this is where you can kind of customize the length of your shorts. So go ahead, I'll just chain one just so it doesn't come undone and just loosen my yarn a little bit. So go ahead and try the shorts on. Obviously they might not be the length that you want, but just make sure that like this isn't doing anything weird or pulling or looking strange when you put the shorts on to the height that you want them. And then we are gonna make some adjustments based on the length that you want the shorts to be. And I'll show you what I'm talking about and all of that in this next clip. But yeah, just go ahead and try them on and then we will make some adjustments and I'll tell you like what to do from here on out. So when I try mine on, this is how it's looking. And I'm pretty happy with this. It's almost at the length that I want the shorts to be. So what you have to take into account is that we are gonna be adding some ribbing to the bottom, like similar to this ribbing. It's not gonna be quite as thick. Uh, it could be if you wanted it to, but I'm gonna make mine a little bit thinner of a ribbing. Um, but we are gonna be adding that to the shorts, which is obviously gonna add length to the shorts. So at this point, once you've tried it on and are happy with how everything's looking, nothing's like pulling and looking weird, um, you can kind of decide how long you want the shorts to go. So if you wanted like really long, then all you would do here is just continue um, going around just like we did when we were going around the actual whole body of the shorts with just half double crochets. You'll do that with half double crochets around the um, leg hole, changing colors and doing everything just like we did. It's obviously just smaller because it's only one leg rather than the whole circumference of the shorts. So if you wanted them longer, you would just keep doing that until it's a longer length, whatever. Let's just say you wanted them fully to be this long. So you might go like until there or something with just the regular half double crochet rows, changing colors and everything. And then you'll pick up with what I'm going to show you next, which is going to be the ribbing. So hopefully that makes sense to you. But what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to go straight in with my ribbing for the bottom because I'm almost at the length that I want. And I'm just going to add that little ribbing just to give me a tiny bit more length at the bottom. But again, do whatever length you want your shorts to be. Um, you don't have to add the ribbing also. If you just want it to end here and you're done with that, then you don't have to add ribbing. But I think it looks cute and yeah, I just, I want to add the ribbing to mine. So that's what I'm going to do. So the next step that I'm going to show you is going to be adding the bottom ribbing, which is going to be your step that you do once you've basically reached the length of shorts that you want, obviously minus the height of the ribbing. So just keep on adding to the length, just going in the round, just like we did the exact same thing that we did for the rest of the shorts, just on the leg holes. And then once you have a length that's almost the way you want it, then you can follow me into the next step and we will do the bottom ribbing. And then we are almost done guys. So once you have the length of the shorts that you're happy with, like I just talked about in one leg, we're not focusing on the other leg yet, but just in one leg, once you're good with that length, um, then we are gonna work on ribbing. So just get it to whatever length you want and then come back to this part and I'm gonna show you how to do the ribbing 
So I've already chained one after doing my slip stitch into that stitch. And so now you're going to chain the height that you want the ribbing to be. So remember here we did a chain 10, including that turning chain at the end. So technically our ribbing was nine stitches tall. Just chain whatever height that you want your leg hole ribbing to be. So I'm gonna do about half of this height. You could do the same height or you could do even smaller or whatever you want, but I'm gonna do about half. So I'm gonna chain five total, including that turning chain. So I've got one there. So two, three, four, five. And then in that second chain from the hook, so not this one right there, but the one right there, you're gonna make a single crochet into both loops like that. Just a single crochet. And then in the next one, do another single crochet. So I'm gonna have a total of four, because I'm going all the way down, and we're not including that last chain, because that was our turning chain. So I've got two, three, and then that last one might be a little hard to get into, but it's at the very end right there. So just go into there for my fourth. Like that, and there we go. So that's kind of gonna be the height of the ribbing, so I'll just show you like what that's gonna look like. Just imagine that going all the way around um, so you can decide if you want that to be smaller or bigger. Totally up to you, but I'm good with that. And the next step is gonna be doing a slip stitch into this very next stitch right there. So slip stitch, and then also make a slip stitch in the next one. So we're doing two slip stitches in total, and then we're gonna turn like that. And then you're gonna skip these next stitches right there because those are both our slip stitches that we just made. So skip those two and go into the third with a back loop only single crochet. And we're gonna do four again. So there was one, let me do my second back loop only single crochet. That's two, got two more, that's three. And then this last one is gonna be at the very end is our fourth. So make sure you're only, you're doing the same number each time. And then chain one and turn. Now we're gonna skip that first chain right next to the hook, that one right there. We're skipping that and going into the next one, the next single crochet, the first single crochet. I guess, with a back loop only single crochet, and then do the same in the next three for a total of four. So that's two, that's three, and then this last one at the end is our fourth. There we go. And then do the same thing where we're gonna single, or slip stitch, I mean, into that next one, that next half double crochet. So do a little slip stitch and then slip stitch in the next one for a total of two slip stitches, then turn. And now we're skipping those first two stitches and then going into the four final ones because we're always just gonna be doing four single crochets. So if you're ever doing more, then that means you aren't going into the right place. So we're skipping those first two, go into this one with back loop only single crochet for a total of four. So there's three and then four, then chain one and turn. And then again, skipping that very first one because that's our turning chain, go into this first single crochet with another back loop only single crochet. And you're probably getting the pattern by this point. We're just gonna keep doing these four back loop only single crochets. And then in the next half double crochet, make a slip stitch. And then in the next one, also make a slip stitch. And this is just what you're gonna do all the way around. Chain one, turn, go into that first single crochet. And yeah, we're just doing this all the way, all the way around this leg hole until we get back to here where we started. And then I am gonna show you what we'll do to end it off. So I made it back around, I'm almost finished up. So I'm just gonna do my two slip stitches and that meets me up right to 
that first one. If yours is a little off, um, it's okay if you only like slip stitch one or slip stitch three, whatever works. But um, I have one more row. So now I'm not gonna chain one. I'm just gonna go right into slip stitching to this first row of ribbing there. So what I'm gonna do is pull that loop loose a little bit and remove my hook and then just go right into that loop, just that top little loop there. So it's just one loop on the hook. Put my hook through this loop that I let go of and then tighten that down a little and then go into this other side here. I'm just gonna go into that very top single loop of that chain, that first chain on the end and then yarn over and pull through all of the loops on my hook like that. So that's our first slip stitch. And then for the second, go into just this loop. So just the front loop of that stitch like that. And then go into the top loop of this second chain and then pull through all three. And then for the third one, just pick that front loop up and then that top loop right there. So we're just slip stitching. We're doing four slip stitches all the way down. And then this final one right here, I'm just picking up that front loop and then that top loop. If I can grab it, it's a little bit difficult. I'm just picking up that loop right there and then slip stitching all of that together. And then chain one and we're gonna cut our yarn and then just pull that through and tighten it down. And now take your next color, which I had black, so my next color is gonna be white. It's gonna be the same color that you made this bridge out of. So I'm gonna insert my hook on the opposite side of the bridge as the stitch marker. So right over here and just right into this stitch right here where we attached our yarn there. Hopefully you can tell. And then just attach your yarn, just like we've done. Pull that through and then chain two. And these next stitches on the bridge are gonna be a little bit difficult to go into, but I'll just show you what we're doing. So this one right there that that half double crochet that's flipped is into. So we're gonna make a half double crochet right into there as our first one. And then the second is gonna be the one that the next half double crochet was into. Right there. It's just gonna be one loop since it's the other side of the chain, if that makes sense. Next one is gonna be right there. Just picking up that one loop. Next one is here. And just doing this all the way down. Then in there, in this number of half double crochets should be the same as the bridge. So mine was eight, so I'm gonna have eight total ones. So I just did my eighth and now it's time to go off of the bridge right into this next stitch there, the one that the stitch marker is in. So just go right into there That. And now we're just doing exactly what we did on the other side, the other leg hole. Just one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So I'll just get back to you once we make it back to where we just started, back around here. So I made it back around. I have one more half double crochet to make. And then I'll just connect to this half double crochet like normal. And at this point, we are just doing exactly what we just did on this other leg hole. So make it as long as you made this one before making your ribbing. For me, this was all I did before making my ribbing. So um, I'm just gonna go straight into the ribbing. So I'm gonna like do my chain five 
and then start working the ribbing around just like we just did but obviously again just do whatever you did on this other leg and just repeat that over here and then we will be completely finished minus leaving in our ends but yeah we'll be totally done after that so i am just gonna start working on this ribbing and i will do that all the way around to finish this second leg and then i'll show you what we'll do next all right so i have finished up the second leg and the shorts are done now all we have to do is do all of these ends so first thing that i am going to do is pick like which side you want to be the inside versus the outside and i want this inside to be the inside so this was like this is the way that i want them to be right side out um and i'm just doing that based on this seam the slip stitch seam from when we made the waistband so that's gonna be the inside for me so this is the outside and what i'm gonna do and by the way you can take out any stitch markers at this point that are still left in because we don't need those so what i'm gonna do is just insert my hook from the inside and just pull all of these ends over to the inside so then i can weave them in and it's all going to be done on like the bad side so right now i'm just moving them so all of the ends are at least on the same side so i'm just like poking my hook through and pulling them through i moved all of the ends to the bad side which is the inside so now i'm just gonna flip it inside out so we can weave all of them in so you're gonna need your darning needle and some scissors now but kind of what i'm gonna do is just take my darning needle and just kind of weave it around through stitches of the same color and then grab that yarn thread it through and then just pull it through there and then I might go like back the other direction. And then I'll just sometimes like tie two ends together, like tie it once and then tie it a second time to actually make like the knot, you know? And then you can tie like this one with another one. You can kind of do whatever. You just want them to be secure and not able to be like unwound because then your whole thing could fall apart. So yeah, I just kind of weave stuff around and once I'm good with things being tied and woven in, then I just cut close to the knot like that. And yeah, I'm just kind of going down the seam and picking up ends and just weaving them as I go. There's no exact way that you have to do it, but we're just trying to keep the ends secure so that nothing unravels. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do for all of the remaining ends. It looks really intimidating and like it's gonna take forever, but it really doesn't. Once you get weaving and tying them and cutting, like they go away pretty quickly. So it's not bad and it's definitely worth making sure that they're secure so that your shorts don't fall apart later. So. I'm going to keep weaving in all these ends and then I will show you what the finished product looks like. I wove in all the ends so now I'll just flip it back right side out and the shorts are finally done. Now I will show you what they look like on. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know I appreciate you guys who like stay till the very end. We're like, we're like that, we're like that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful in making your own pair of shorts. As always, ask any questions that you have, any comments, anything, just comment them if you want. And like the video and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this so I can like show up in your subscription feed when I make a new one.
because that's how subscriptions work. I don't know why I felt the need to explain that. But that's all I have to say. I hope you guys have a great day, great week, great summer, great month, great year, great life, okay? I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.